What about unsupervised learning? Right, so unsupervised learning, we don't get those examples. We have just essentially something like inputs, and we have to derive some structure from them just by looking at the relationship between the inputs themselves. Right, so um, give me an example of that. So when you're studying different kinds of animals, say, uh, even as a kid, you mm -hmm. might start to say, oh, there's these animals that all look kind of the same. They're all four-legged. I'm going to call all of them dogs, even if they happen to be horses or cows or whatever. But I have developed, without anyone telling me, this sort of notion that all these belong in the same class, and it's different from things like trees. Which don't have four legs. Well, some do, but, I mean, they, have, they both bark, is all I'm saying. <laughs> Did I really set you up for that? Not on I, purpose. I'm sorry, I want to apologize to each and every one of you for that, but that was pretty good. Michael is very good at wordplay, which I guess is often unsupervised as well. No, I get a lot of supervised. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly get a lot of feedback. Yeah, that's right. So I think, please stop doing that. So if supervised learning is about function approximation, then unsupervised learning is about description. It's about taking a set of data and figuring out how you might divide it up in one way or the other. Or maybe even summarization. It's not just a description, but it's a shorter description. Yeah, it's usually a concise, compact uh, description. So I might take a bunch of pixels like I have here and might say <laughs> male. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I'm pixels now? As far as we can tell. Ah, that's fine. I, however, am not pixels. I know I'm not pixels. I'm pretty sure the rest of you are pixels. That's right. So I have a bunch of pixels, and I might say male, um, and or I might say female, or I might say dog, or I might say tree. But the point is I don't have a bunch of labels that say dog, tree, male, or female. I just decide that pixels like this belong with pixels like this, as opposed to pixels like something else that I'm pointing to behind. Yeah, we're living in a world right now that is devoid of any other objects. Oh, chairs. Chairs, right. Chairs. So these pixels are very different from those pixels um, because of where they are relative to the other pixels. Say, right? So if you were I'm looking, not sure that's helping me understand unsupervised learning. Go, out and, go outside and look at a crowd of people um, and try to decide how you might divide them up. Maybe you'll divide them up by ethnicity. Maybe you'll divide them up by whether they have uh, purposely shaven their hair in order to mock the bald, or whether they have curly hair. Uh, maybe you'll divide them up by whether they have um, goatees, hair. Mm -hmm. or whether they have gray hair. There's lots of things that you might do in Did order to Did you just point them. at me and say gray hair? I was pointing and your head happened oh, to be there. come on. Pixels, Where's it's, the gray it's a two-dimensional, right there. It's right where your spit curl is. Okay, so imagine you're dividing the world up that way. You can divide it up male, female, you can divide it up short, tall, wears hats, doesn't wear hats, all kinds of ways you can divide it up. And no one's telling you the right way to divide it up, at least not directly. That's unsupervised learning. That's description. Because now, mm. rather than having to send pixels of everyone or having to do a complete description of this crowd, you can say there were 57 males and 23 females, say. Or there were mostly people with beards. So or I, whatever. I like summarization for that. That's I like summarization good. for that. It's a nice, right. concise description. That's unsupervised good. learning. Very good. Um, and practice, that's different from supervised learning. It's different in supervised learning, and it's different in a couple of ways. One way that it's different is all of those ways that we could have just, uh, divided up the world, in some sense, are all equally good. So I could divide up by sex, or I could divide up by height, or I could divide up by clothing, or whatever, and they're all equally good absent some other signal later mm. telling you how you should be dividing up the world, but supervised learning directly tells you there's a signal, this is what it ought to be, and that's how you train. And those now, are very different. But I can see ways that unsupervised learning could be helpful in the supervised setting, right? So if I do get a nice description and it's the right kind of description, it might help me map to, it might help me do the function approximation better. Right, so instead of taking pixels at input, as input and then labels like male or female, I could just simply take a summarization of you, like how much hair mm -hmm. you have, your relative height to weight, and various things like that that might help me do it. That's right. Um, and by the way, in practice, this turns out to be things like uh, density estimation. We do end up turning it into statistics at the end of the day, often. It was statistics from the beginning. But when you say density estimation, yes, are you saying I'm stupid? No. All right, so what is density estimation? Well, they'll have to take the class to find out. I see. Okay. 